morning. I'm doing something very, very different for me today. I have come down to a venue called Cheddar Reservoir. It's apparently 105 hectares of water in a big, big concrete bowl. Uh, we went for a walk up on Cheddar Gorge a couple of weekends ago and looking down the valley, we could just see this big expanse of water and I thought, I wonder if there's any fish in there. And yeah, as luck would have it, after a bit of research, a bit of looking around online, viewing a couple of YouTube videos, it turns out, yes, there are. There is a good head of uh, double-figure pike in here. So I thought, with the river season finished, um, the lure challenge kind of completed, it was time to give it a bit of a go. Now it's a very different water for me, but the setup uh, that I've been advised to use is pretty much the same. I'm using legend dead baits, uh, I've got sardines, I've got mackerel, and I've got herring. And yeah, basically the advice that I've been given is lob it out as far as you possibly can and bury the distances when you're lobbing it out. Uh, don't pull back because there's quite a lot of weed, so hopefully you'll get a separation from the lead and the bait. The bait will sit on top of the weed, and away you go. Now, they've been out for about 40 minutes, and yeah, the, the guys that I've spoken to, all of them have said, keep the baits moving, keep the baits moving. So, I'm going to up sticks, I'm going to go a couple of markers down this concrete shelf, have a rechuck. And yeah, we'll see what's what. I'm pretty hopeful of the bite. Everyone that I spoke to was, um, yeah, you know, this time of year, you should be on for a couple of fish. However, it might be later in the day. So yeah, it's probably about 11 now, and I've got till dusk, which is about six o'clock now. So yeah, fingers crossed, get amongst the pike. Yeah, see how we do. So we've had a bit of a move, albeit mm, 15 meters down the bank. But that's what I've been told to do, so I'm going with the best advice that I could get. It was mainly, if you're fishing the water this size, it's kind of like chucking it out into the abyss. You've got absolutely no idea what the hell is out there. And yeah, you could spend hours with a marker rod and figuring it out. But from what I've been told, this part of the lake reservoir shelves off a lot quicker so you hit deeper water a lot quicker than you do on the eastern side i'm on the western side at the moment but yeah had a move out uh when i pulled in both of the rods one was completely weed free the other had a little bit of weed around the lead but i think that's more about where i'm reading it back in i think it's just dragging through um, but yeah the other thing that i have done is i made up a really stinky mix of odds and ends that I've had kicking around in the freezer. So bits of mackerel, bits of sardine, leftover bits of sprat that have been defrosted and refrozen. And I got spod rod out. So I've gone a bit carpy and I've walloped out, must be six or so spods, three over the kind of general area that I'm fishing. And yeah, a nice big slit came up and I could, you know, so I could see where they were landing. And yeah, I'm hoping that'll put a bit of scent in the water. Feels a bit like shark fishing or kind of chumming. But yeah, 20 minutes or so here, I reckon. And then another hop 15 metres down the bank. Repeat the same process, see how we go. Damn. Had two takes. Both on the left hand rod with mackerel. Both didn't result in a fish, unfortunately. My mate Jim turned up about half an hour ago. He'd literally been here about ooh, three minutes and all of a sudden the left hand rod just pulled out the clip and peep, off it went. And yeah, I could tell from the moment I picked up the rod there was no fish on the end. So I slung it back out there as quick as I could. And uh, yeah, literally kind of 15 or so minutes later, really really violent take and this yeah it actually screamed off um this time though you could definitely feel the fish on the end so i struck into it started reeling in and i must have got about halfway to the bank and fell off very very annoying but it's good to know that the tactics are working i suppose i seem to have found a spot that isn't massively weedy as well uh, both the rods are coming back with weed on them, which is fine. I kind of want some weed because it'll give the pike cover. But yeah, 
Great to have got a couple of runs, really frustrating to have lost them. But it's about half one, I suppose now. Sun's broken through the clouds in true March style and it's actually really quite warm. So yeah, I'm gonna sit on these rods I'm not going to move. I've, based, I've got a guy 20 metres up the bank from me now. Um, I can leapfrog him, but I'm quite happy to sit here for another 20 minutes, half an hour, just see if any of those fish might have been the same fish. Who knows? See if they come back. So, yeah, really frustrating to have lost two, but good to have got a run. See what happens. Well, I've moved another couple of times, 20 metre hops up the bank couple of recasts in each in each hop just kind of spreading the rods left and right but still absolutely nothing I've not had a another knock after those two runs earlier which is a bit of a shame would have been nice if they'd connected with fish but we are rapidly approaching kind of late afternoon it's about half four now and I'm really really hoping that if the pike are going to feed in any kind of you know earnest between now and darkness is when they're going to do it. So I'm going to go in fully prepared. I've got another couple of rigs uh, tied up there. I'm going to put fresh baits on them. Uh, I'm going to stick with one sardine, one mackerel, because uh, I think that's a that's a good kind of kind of alternative to each other. And yeah, we just have to see what happens. Um, I'm really pleased with my homemade rod pod, by the way. I knew that the banks here were concrete and there's absolutely no chance in hell of getting a bank stick in them. And I've never used a rod pod. It's just not something I've ever wanted to, to own. I've always liked to point my rods where I'm fishing. So single bank sticks have always been the go for me. But yeah, I had a bit of a think and this is my kind of heavy duty tripod that I use for landscape photography. And I thought, all right, can I rig up some kind of crossbar? And yeah, there's a builder's merchants around the corner for me. So I shot down there, managed to get myself a, a length of wood for free, but I didn't want anything for it because it just came from the kind of discarded wood pile. And yeah, I got busy with the glue gun and the drill and managed to cobble this up. And I gotta say, it works an absolute treat, especially because of the, the tripod and the three legs, I can actually get it exactly where I want it, get it nice and level, perfect. So yeah, rob pods eat your heart out. This thing is the money. But I've just set my alarm for 20 minutes, 20 minutes here, and then I'm gonna hop back 20 meters and work my way back towards the tower. And fingers crossed, we get a pickup. Who knows? Well, we've hit five o'clock, which I'm hoping, hope against hope, is bite o'clock. So I've moved, I did another 20 and another 20, so I'm kind of in the general area of where I got those two runs earlier on. With nothing else to go on, that's as good as I can kind of do, I think. So yeah, both rods gone out and I've spotted out over the top a really, really disgusting mix of dead fish and Thai fish sauce and mackerel fillets and brine and all sorts of yuck. Um, so I'm hoping that's all kind of fluttered down, sat on top of the weeds and the pike, who are now going to wake up and feed in gusto, are going to attack my dead baits like there's no tomorrow. So yeah, fingers crossed, the last hour, hour and a half, we get a pickup, and it results in a fish in the net. Let's see how we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
complete and utter change of tactic. That was a popped up sardine. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Happy, happy days. So all that effort had finally paid off and I had a plump pike of around 14 pounds on the map. Unfortunately, a dog walker had noticed me land the fish and decided to stop and chat. Sadly, what she didn't do was put her very excitable golden retriever back on its lead. A mixture of the dog leaping around and the owner interjecting with questions meant that it was almost impossible to get any footage of my catch. And as the dog's antics were clearly stressing the pike out, I decided to get it back in the water and released as quickly as possible. The light is fading fast and there hasn't really been any other signs yet, although we did just see what we thought was a fish, maybe, splash out. For a big bit of water, there's not a lot of signs to go on. It's, yeah, pretty kind of devoid of surface activity to give away where, you know, anything might be. But put the, both, both the rods now are on popped up sardines. Put those out um, and yeah, chummed out the, or spotted out the last of the stinky, fishy ugh, mix that I had. And uh, yeah, it's been silent ever since. It's gone completely dead still. There's a load of cloud cover come in and there's virtually, I mean, the water's completely flat. So yeah, it's been a good day. I mean, having never fished here before, to get two runs, admittedly, that I lost, and then that one towards the end there was a bit of a result, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, only a short video, I suppose. Lots of kind of time lapses and bits and pieces. You never know, we might, might get one more. I think we've probably got about 15, 20 minutes left before we really do have to pack down. And uh, yeah pretty good days angling so yeah click subscribe if you haven't click like the video if you did like the video and i'll see you next time cheers